Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today we're doing our most crazy showdown I think we have ever done. In the red corner, representing AMD, we have the Radeon Pro Duo. This one is from Sapphire. And over in the green corner, representing NVIDIA, we have two GeForce GTX 980 Ti's, and these are the Asus Strix model. So let's jump right into it then with these high-end GPUs and talk about uh, what chip they actually have in them. So we'll start straight then with the uh, GTX 980 Ti. So this has been out for a while, so most of you probably know uh, what GPU it's coming with. It's the GM200-310 Maxwell GPU. Uh, very powerful, same one you'll find in the Titan X, although this one is a slightly cut down version, but it doesn't really matter uh, that much in terms of performance as we uh, noticed when we did our 980 Ti versus Titan X showdown. So yeah, very, very powerful. NVIDIA GPU and this guy and over on the Pro Duo you're seeing two GPUs. It's a dual GPU graphics card So it's coming with the two 28 nanometer Fiji GPUs similar to the ones you would find in say a uh, R9 Nano So all very good. there. very high-end GPUs on both of these graphics cards obviously running two 980 Ti's now let's get into the actual numbers then. So with the AMD Radeon Pro Duo, you're going to be getting a total of 8,192 stream processors. Wow, that is absolutely crazy. And over on the NVIDIA side, if you combine together the CUDA cores on both 980 Ti's, it comes to a total of 5,632 CUDA cores. That is really, really high. So really big numbers coming out here. And it doesn't end with the GPUs. Let's move over to the memory then. So when we look memory wise on the Pro Duo, it's coming with eight gigabytes total or four gigabytes effective of HBM memory. Now that is on a dual 4096 bit bus at 500 megahertz. So just absolutely crazy bus width coming out on the Pro Duo. Now, the 980 Ti isn't a slouch either, although it is using a more standard technology in GDDR5. So it's coming with 12 gig gigabytes total, if you added the cards together, but still six gigabytes effectively, of GDDR GDDR5 on two 384-bit buses at a memory speed of 7,100 megahertz. So really, really, um, fast and quite a lot of GDDR5. However, HBM has the big benefit of just an absolutely massive amount of memory bandwidth and it's a much newer uh, technology. So it does have a bit of an advantage there. Now, as far as GPU speeds go, on the 980 Ti's, which come with GPU Boost 2.0, which will automatically overclock if temperatures allow, uh, the Strix were going up to about 1404 megahertz, which is um, above average for a 980 Ti, but definitely not the fastest that we've seen out of the 980 Ti's. Over on the Pro Duo though, it was much more standard. It doesn't have technology like that, so it just goes at its rated speed, which is 1000 megahertz or one gigahertz. Now TDP wise, so on the uh, Radeon Pro Duo, the TDP isn't as mental as you might have might think it could be uh, it's actually 350 watts which is still pretty damn high there's no getting around that but it's not as crazy as many people uh, thought it would be when they first uh, heard it get announced over on the NVIDIA side of things the GTX 980 Ti is coming with a 250 watt TDP but there are two of them so that is another thing to take into consideration now a lot of people were telling me because I have a 760 watt power supply a lot of people were saying oh the Pro Duo won't run in your system you don't have enough power oh you know you can't run these two 980 Ti's um, it's just going to take too much power because, you know, the Pro Duo has three 8-pin power connectors and um, both 980 Ti's, well, they each take two 8-pins, so it comes to a total of four 8-pin power connectors. But I took the total power draw, and this was in IDA64 with the GPU stress, the CPU stress, this is worst case scenario. And the uh, 980 Ti SLI 
my whole total system power draw was 610 watts. Okay, 610 watts. So still quite a bit shy of the 750 watt total of my power supply. And the uh, Radeon Pro Duo was a bit less. Total power draw of 586 watts. So a bit better there for uh, the Pro Duo. Probably what I was expecting when you compare the TDPs. Um, but yeah, it's not that much and it really that's going to make a huge difference at the end of the day. But still, um, a decent amount of power draw there, but nowhere near. People just go way over the top with what they think of you, what sort of power supply you need to run the components. You know, you can usually get away with a lot less than what the vast majority of people out there will tell you that you actually need. So let's go over the coolers then. So uh, we'll start with the Strix because that's got a more standard air cooler here. So it's got the three fan design that we've seen for a while. It's got quite a low profile to it, uh, low profile aluminium heat sinks there, but it has got these big thick heat pipes coming out um, around it. So that's really good too. It's got a nice big back plate there. This is a gorgeous looking card. I really do think it's uh, a, a nice, damn nice looking card. Uh, the Strix on the side there lights up, which looks really good. And generally, uh, cooling wise, these do pretty good on the uh, NVIDIA side of things. Although when they slap this cooler on the AMD cards, like one, the one in my rig right now, the 390, it doesn't generally do uh, as well. But on the NVIDIA side of things, it generally does okay. However, it's completely trumped by the uh, all-in-one liquid cooler from Cooler Master that the Radeon Pro Duo runs. So this is very similar to the one you get on the Fury X. Obviously, you're getting uh, two uh, pumps within the card itself, um, which is different from the Fury X. But yeah, uh, on the Fury X, this cooler performed absolutely awesome. So I'm expecting a similar result out of this one on the Pro Duo. Now with all of that out of the way, let's jump into the benchmarks then and see how these cards do. So I didn't even bother with 1080p because if you're running you know, two 980Ti's or a single Pro Duo, I would hope, oh my goodness, I would hope you are not playing games at 1080p. Oh my goodness. So uh, we just did 1440p and 4K and let's jump into the benchmarks and see how these cards do. And we're back. So judging by those results, it's a pretty decisive victory uh, for the 980 Ti's. Um, the, you know, they pretty much won in about everything. I mean, it did get close a few times there, but it's a pretty resounding victory for these 980 Ti's. And I tried to, you know, we threw synthetics in there. 
Uh, we threw some more, you know, NVIDIA favored games and some AMD favored games um, to try and make it as fair as possible. But also in the Shadow of Mordor benchmark, you'll see I threw in a single 980 Ti just for reference to give you an idea and a single uh, Fury X. So that'll give you a bit of an idea of how these uh, SLI and uh, uh, dual GPU cards do compared to uh, their single GPU counterparts. But what's also interesting is the scaling. So um, the performance increase of uh, these 980 Ti's over a single 980 Ti is 61%, which is pretty good. You know, that's kind of what we expect. People think it's all the way up at like 80 or 90%. You're just absolutely kidding yourself. So 61%, that's about uh, what we would expect. However, over on the Pro Duo, we saw a bit less that it scaled up about 57% over a uh, single Fury X. Now I would have liked a little bit more out of a dual GPU card if I'm totally honest. I know that's still very close to what the 980 Ti's were at and it's still pretty much um, where we would be expecting it but as far as the uh, scaling would go I would have expected it to be above the 980 Ti's in SLI but you know it's close enough so it's not really that big of a deal at the end of the day. Which brings us now to temperatures. So performance isn't everything if the cards are running at a million degrees all the time. And temperatures wise, uh, obviously the NVIDIA cards are gonna be a, at a slight disadvantage being that they're air cooled versus the Pro Duo which is liquid cooled. So to take the temperatures, I did the Unigen Valley benchmark on the Extreme HD preset and I took the highest uh, temperatures and the highest fan speed they the cards went up to. So the Strix 980 Ti's and SLI, the hottest one went up to 85 degrees Celsius at 58% fan speed. The Radeon Pro Duo on the other hand went up to 55 degrees Celsius at 24% fan speed. So a massive victory there for the Radeon Pro Duo. That is vastly, vastly cooler at a much lower fan speed. But that is what we're expecting because the Fury X um, does a, a bit less than that. You know, it's a bit cooler, um, which is, you know, what we expect. This card will be slightly hotter than a Fury X. But it's still insanely, insanely good. I didn't think it would be doing that good. Um, so yeah, really, really big victory there for the Pro Duo. It's a much, much cooler graphics card over the 980 Ti. Which brings us to noise. So it's great that the Radeon Pro Duo was so cool, but wasn't making a whole heap of noise at the same time. Well, actually it wasn't. So one of the biggest criticisms of the Fury X was the fact that the pumps themselves made quite a bit of noise, the Cooler Master pump. Now I believe Cooler Master went back and did something to the pumps to make the noise go away. And uh, honestly, I wasn't hearing any excessive pump noise with the Radeon Pro Duo. It was very good in that aspect. However, it was coming with significantly more coil wine than the 980 Ti's. It was actually quite noticeable. But in terms of noise in general, uh, of course the Radeon Pro Duo was much, much quieter than the 980 Ti's. It obviously being liquid cooled, you saw the fan speed and the temperature uh, benchmarks. So yeah, it, it just did a much, much better job in terms of noise. However, as always, I will let you judge for yourself. So uh, this was taken from the Unigen Valley benchmark. So as these cards were doing the Unigen Valley benchmark, now it's kind of hard to know what to film on the um, Radeon Pro Duo. It actually didn't fit in my case because of my H110 at the top. So I had to leave it outside. And the reason you might see uh, it was pointing at me, you know, at the chair was because this thing makes a really good heater. And, and uh, at nighttime when it gets kind of cold here, uh, it was quite good having <laughs> the radiator pointing at me. It was like having a, a heater blowing hot air on me when I was gaming. Uh, so that was just a funny little thing I did. But um, here we go into the benchmark and you guys can judge for yourself what you think of the noise. So yeah, pretty much what I said, uh, the Pro Duo is much, much quieter than the 980 Ti. 
Which brings us now to the conclusion, and obviously we got to take price into consideration. So in New Zealand, if you go to Playtech and want to buy two of these Asus Strix GTX 980 Ti's, it's going to set you back about $2,400. Now that is a lot of money for a graphics card, or graphics cards in this case. However, it's still cheaper than buying the single Radeon Pro Duo, which is coming with a price tag at Playtech of $2,800. So $400 more than the Jill GTX 980 Ti's. So with that being said, and taking that into consideration, I've got to say, uh, honestly, I am a bit disappointed in AMD. Now, people call me an AMD fanboy. People sometimes call me a NVIDIA fanboy. But as I tell people all the time, I do not care what company it comes from. I just care about its performance, obviously its temps, its noise, and its features. And I'm a bit disappointed with this. I was expecting better out of the Radeon Pro Duo. It's the same, exact same feeling I felt when I tested the Fury X. Yeah, the Fury X was a good card, and the Radeon Pro Duo is a good card, but it's too much money, and you're not getting enough for it. You're not getting the performance that you would really hope from it. Um, so yeah, I have to give it to the 980 Ti's in SLI. You'll be getting better performance, albeit you're gonna be getting a hotter running, hotter running cards, and you know they're gonna uh, be more noisy. However, the performance is what most of us care about the most at the end of the day. And for $400 less, you're getting better performance. So I just got to give it to the 980, 980 Ti's in SLI. It's just the better thing to go for if you are gaming. Now, the Radeon Pro Duo still has a place, but I would say that place isn't really for uh, gaming so much. I mean, if you've got a compact build or something and you want something that'll squeeze in that still has a lot of performance and maybe you could go with something like this um, for productivity it probably will do a pretty good job but as far as gaming goes it's very hard to recommend this guy just because of the sheer price now if you're someone that cares more about temperatures and noise than performance then hey you could see that maybe this one is better to go to than the 980 Ti's but honestly, I very much doubt that anyone would be willing to spend extra money on this for less performance just because it runs cooler and it makes less noise. So yeah, that's how I'm going to say this one, guys. Um, pretty disappointed, AMD. Honestly, you keep getting my hopes up. <laughs> and I keep thinking this is going to be awesome, you know, to test. And you're going to bring it to NVIDIA this time. And every time lately, I'm just let down. Honestly, at the higher end things, don't get me wrong, some of your, you know, mid uh, high end cards and that, like the 398, 390, and, uh, you know, 380 and stuff, are extremely good value for money, and they are very good graphics cards for the money, but with your really high end stuff, you just keep falling flat. Let's hope with Polaris, you come back, and uh, let's just hope AMD can actually make some really high-end GPUs that can actually bring it to NVIDIA. That's what I'm hoping for more than anything. Now, I thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already and like the video. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.